one of Ali's coaches used to tell us, man, rugby league is the best place to die. That field out there, <laughs> man. Don't worry about anything else. Um, I'm Cliff Thompson. Uh, very fortunate to be in this position to talk to you today. Uh, we represent the NZRL. And uh, here to my, my left, co-host, let him introduce himself today. It's Alofa. My name is Ali Lotiti. Good to be here. And um, yeah, hope everyone's fighting their front. So with that being said, I mean, Ali's just sort of alluded to it. This podcast is, is all about uh, well-being, wellness, and um, we framed it up calling it Find Your Front. And uh, we said this in episode one. I'm just going to ask Ali here to give us a bit of a rundown before we introduce our guest this morning. Uh, what Find Your Front means in the context of rugby league and how that might, Ali, transition into life? Yeah, Finding Your Front is a rugby league term. Um, obviously, um, it's the bit of momentum, you know, when you're – um, attacking a you know a defensive line, you're you're trying to find your front so you can get quick, quick play of the ball. Um, and in saying that, it's it's, it's like life. Um, uh, when you think about life, you're you're trying to uh, be in a position that you can uh, move forward when you're going through some tough times. And I think that's what finding your front is. And um, similar to your game, you know, you're, you're trying to gain momentum and mm. in life. Um, hopefully, you know, the hope is that everyone finds their front when they're going through some tough times and. Uh, they can move forward. Me, well said. Um, and with that being said, you know we, we just want to give a shout out to the One NZ Warriors as well for uh, partnering with us on these these podcasts, letting us use their facilities. Uh, it's really uh, privilege for us, a real privilege for us to be able to be here in this space and to do this uh, together. So, with that being said, I'm going to introduce our guest today, uh, the esteemed, the, the wonderful, the great uh, Jerry Siusi. So, uh, welcome, Jerry. Welcome to the show. No, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for having me. I'm just still just ruminating on uh, Ali's uh, description of final front <laughs> and momentum, and I think wow, how appropriate the Michael Jordan of rugby league creating momentum. Here we beautiful, go. beautiful. Um, so, Jez, you know, obviously we're going to talk about a few things today. You you work here at the Warriors, um, but you've also played for the Kiwis. You play mm. for the Warriors as well. Um, but we know some of this, some of the challenge with a lot of this stuff, and then being a professional athlete is how to navigate all of that and be seen as a, a human being with real other real issues and other real things that just happen in your life. Maybe not issues, but just life stuff that goes on. So we want to have a bit of a conversation with you about that today. Um, so we really appreciate your time and privilege that you, you joined us here to have a conversation. With that all being said, it's important to go back a little bit, a bit of um, whanaungatanga and uh, whakapapa. So where are you from? A bit about your background growing up. Um, Family, yeah, give us give us the rundown, man. So, wow, okay. How long have we got? No, <laughs> um, no, real simple. Uh, mum and dad were from Samoa. Uh, dad was from a village called Afenga uh, through the Fata line, and uh, mum was from a village called Fangali'i uh, through the Savea, uh, Aimeleanga, and um, Bolimangafa lines. So, for Samoans, though, I kind of understand that lineage. And then, um, yeah, they landed here in the 70s. So I was born here in Auckland. Uh, National Women's Hospital. Does that, is that hospital still going? It doesn't matter. And um, yeah, grew up mostly, I don't know if you've heard it, an exclusive suburb about South uh, called Otara. And so uh, grew up there, Tangaroa College. Um, and then, yeah, um, found myself at the Warriors. I was uh, from a family of six sisters, one brother. Um, went for university, actually. Tried, tried, tried to train nice. to be a teacher. Thought I was going to be a peer teacher at one stage. Um and then, oh yeah, and find myself now, grandfather to two, uh, father to three, uh, husband to one. Oh, just one? Yeah, just one. And <laughs> uh, no, just jokes. Come on, man, stop it. Um, yeah, and that's, that's where I'm in right now, today. Nice. So a couple of things to pick up from the edges, growing up out south, right? Mm. And we're not going to go into that whole narrative about the stigma that, you know, South Auckland, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we know that there are some great people, some great things that happen. They say revival starts in the south, right? So yeah. some great things come from the south, but... For you growing up here, getting into rugby league, I mean, it's how did that happen? What was the the start point of that journey for you? Yeah, it actually was, was cool. You know, just a bunch of guys. You know, we uh, Tangaro College. We liked playing bull rush, fifty on fifty at lunchtime, and then we uh, was uh, we're on fourteen. Ended up uh, one of our mates was coaching uh, at Otara Scorpions, and so uh, we ended up there. Uh, so the journey basically started there until uh, another friend when we were fifteen. He says, um, "Hey, how are Hornets?" They'll pay us 20 bucks if we go and play for them. I thought, oh, mate, the professional career starting right here. No. And then so we we wandered down to Howick. And um, 
interesting journey. We I remember we we lost one game, 124 nil. So I learned how wow. to tackle. Not sure about my teammates, but <laughs> that was a good uh, learning experience. So sort of came through there, Mangere East, and then and then landed here at the Warriors not long after. So 124 nil. How's that for the well being? Well, I tell you, it wasn't good for my teammates, but uh, at the time, um, it was funny because we were playing, um, there was a, uh, a team that was known as the, the, they'll probably know, the Christian team back in the early 1990s, and they were stacked, and um, it was fair enough, they, they probably had to beat us by that score, but um, me and my uh, 12 Balangi mates, it wasn't too good, but uh, all good, <laughs> it's, it was all a learning experience. Sure it was. That is a true jazz, uh, just a close um, source. Um, apparently, you know, um, I've seen you play, you never back down from a challenge, but I heard, you know, sometimes when you got into a scuffle at school, you'll come home, uh, fill up the, you know, pillowcase, use it as a boxing boxing bag and start boxing. It was, was that where you kind of got your um, competitiveness or, you know, never back down from a challenge? Wow, you? your research eh, is <laughs> next level, man. Um, you know, I can't deny that there was some pillows being filled with stuff and, and things being punched at home, but I don't know if it was that in that order. Uh, <laughs> No, um, what can I say is, um, no, good times at school, and uh, it, was a, it was a real grounding place at uh, mm. the South, and uh, and I think gratitude was the thing you learned uh, from young, because we didn't come from much, so um, if you're eating uh, biscuit soup or um, pig hours, trotters yeah. or, you know, uh, the, 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 the carcass chicken, uh, you know, as you're growing <laughs> up, it's just all good, man. You, you know no better, so, you know, you just... Be thankful and you eat it. Yeah, nice. right. mm. and we'll pick up a bit on that. So sort of that gratitude stuff and mm. reflection back in a moment. But um, just you mentioned there about sort of coming through fourteen. 15. When did you get picked up, sort of by the Warriors? And this thing became a thought that you know what I could make a career out of it. I could do something here. Um, what was that point for you? When did that all begin? Because yeah. you know, I mean, in the terms of footy, people say you know, like Jez came on the scene a little bit later than most. Um, even though you were still young. But for you, when did that start? What happened? What was sort of the background on that? Yeah, no, no, you, you're funny. Yeah, the, the, mate, the mind just goes um, sort of way back in history. Hey, way, 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 way back. <laughs> no, um, so it would have been like uh, 1996. Um, we just finished the Lion Red Cup final. Um, and um, I, man, I was just happy to be there. Mm. And then we were at Carlow Park uh, underneath the grandstand and uh, Frank Endicott, uh, come up to us after the game. So we we just won. We just beaten. I think it was Waitakere, and um, and he says, "Hey, how about you come and play for the reserves next year and, and Warriors reserves?" You know, and, and then I had to pick my jaw up off the ground and think, "Wow, that that's awesome. I'd love to." And um, you know, and, and just the thought then at the time was, "Wow, the Warriors, you know, want us to come and be part of the club." And so it was only really then that it sort of dawned that, "Hey, this could be mm. um, a real, you know, a career," you know. Up until then, you're just playing with your mates and just still just enjoying it, eh? Um, yeah, because like 94, I took the year off. 95, I, I started playing Counties Manukau. And so 96, at the end of the year, being asked to join the Warriors was sort of a bit of a shotgun trip, eh? So mm. I look back and I'm always grateful uh, that there were people uh, there, that there was a, like a, a pathway into it uh, from uh, Mangere East in 1993 to Counties Manukau and you know, 1995, and then the Warriors in 1996. Yeah, nice. And so when we think about, obviously, your playing career, um, that for every athlete comes to an end at some point. Mm -hmm. When that ended for you, what was that transition like? Because for those that don't know, um, that's probably one of the the greatest areas of challenge for an athlete mm -hmm. is the, the transition out mm -hmm. of being a professional athlete. Um, what was that experience like for you? Because you mentioned also that you went down this – path of teaching yeah no, so I was kind of fortunate in one sense being a, uh, an older student because I was at university studying to be a teacher at the time and so when Frank asked me to come join the Warriors it was sort of like I was already on the pathway mm. of studying and um, but in saying that so you know while I was playing there was the opportunity to finish uh, a degree uh, they call it the BA degree which stands for bugger all so, uh, <laughs> which they, so it just allowed me to go into teaching um, so, you know, I was doing that qual. Uh, so, but it's still late. It was funny because I finished and I was 32 years old. Uh, we come back to New Zealand and I thought, oh man, I'll just, um, I'll just take a week off, uh, put my CV together and then, um, see what's out there. Yeah, right. 
So six months later, I was still <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, so it was just the way it went. So even with the qual, because um, I, you know, I, I inquired about teaching, and they said, "Oh, you need to come back and do a, a certificate because your because um, your certificate is ten years old." No, because um, you know, because I needed to do mm. that. And so, so even that bit was 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 difficult in the sense that um, you, you realize it's a, it's a massive mind shift thing. Eh? Mm. I suppose the hardest part of it, not the hard, oh, it is the hardest part, is just to recognize that. Um, the income changes, eh? And that's probably the biggest mm. thing. And then just getting used to a different lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so even though we'd played 10 years and, um, you know, we had a head start in terms of my peers, that still was a, a took a while to try and figure out um, psychologically, even with the credentials and yeah. and um, and what have you. Yeah. So just um, probably one of the questions, I know um, as, a, as a league player, you know, we tend to forget about our wives or our partners. Mm. And I know that you've, you know, uh, everyone looks at you as a role model, but also, um, you know, a leader within our communities. But how important is having a good, you know, um, some you know, good support um, network, especially around, you know, family, but also your wife? I know, mm. um, yeah, your wife plays a big part, you know. And yeah, so my wife, um, Shucks, what's her name again? No, just <laughs> Um yeah, No, you're right. You know, we, um, they don't get the mention or the, um, or the accolade that they should, eh? And um, I'm really thankful for my wife when I look back, eh? And you see, because um, she spent a lot of time with the kids uh, growing up in those very formative years. You know, you're away with the, for me, it was away with the Warriors and then the Wigan Warriors and then you're away with the Kiwis. I remember one time we went on the tour, 2002, and we were like away for two months, eh? And that's that's a long time yeah. with with you know when my wife she had three kids under under five and eh, managing that part so you know I look back and I and I recognize how um you know how much work she did for me in terms of the career um but then also just um for me also not having to worry I suppose about that aspect of my life um if you know what I mean I, I didn't have to go and um date and um yeah you know like, like different girlfriend every weekend no um just saying you know that area was was sorted in that sense so you know you look back and you're grateful um for for marriage and and the wife and all the work she did while we were um nice. in the profession but in saying that mate it wasn't easy marriage to say you know this thing you know because I don't know about you at tongue at all we didn't have the marriage class and so it was a constant work on yeah. well I think that's the you know, you mentioned it there, it's the constant work on, right? Mm. And that shows the ability to, or the willingness to to be in the, the wrestle with it. So with that being said, you, you talked about transitioning out. You talked about um, sort of looking post-career, what you might do. Having to embrace that wrestle of retirement, transition, and it, it's, it's interesting, eh? Like, I mean, we've, we've talked about it before, that – professional sport is one of those spaces where mm. in life it's very rare. And what I mean by that is that psychologically when you retire, you're retiring at the age of 32, 33, there's not many other professions in life that have that sort of finality at such a young age in your mm. life. The only thing that sort of really comes close that I can think of is probably death. Someone passes away mm. and it's final, it's done. Yeah. But there's not many other careers when you're, I mean, Especially most of us retire at 65, eh? That's the retirement age. But like to be retiring that's it. You're not going to play another professional game at 32. You're still young. Um, that's a real challenge. What are your thoughts on that? Like, is is that a psychological? Do you think that plays a part? A psychological challenge that you still feel like you're in your prime. You're still young, but yet that career that you've been molded and shaped from maybe 16, 17, mm. for some people younger, is now over at the age of 32. Do you think that's a thing? And, and if so, what impacts do you think that that sort of has on people? And yeah, no, that's a good question, actually. It's a big question, but I look back now and I see a lot of it's, it is tied to identity, eh? Like, um, even now as I'm helping players transition, I recognize that those that are very comfortable in who they are transition easier to those that, you know, rugby league forms a big part of their identity and who they are. And so I think that's the piece here. Like, if, if, a, if a person can journey through the professional ranks and have a value set where – you know, um, they understand who they are in spite of the game. It's a hard mm. piece to manufacture because, you know, you know the media and not just the media but your, your own self and the way that you live and people's feedback sort of reinforce this yeah. idea that this is, you know, this is everything and who you are. And, and, and in some senses we do that too in terms of professional sports, in terms of, you know, owning your position and, and being that person, being the man and what have you, uh, or being the woman in the, in the NRLW. So 
you know, I think that's the key part is the identity mm. part. Um, for me personally, it was like um, I always felt like it's almost over, like every year. And then I just got another year and another, you know, got a little <laughs> bit of an extension. And then Ali was scoring tries and we were going to grand finals <laughs> and it just made it easy to get another contract. So, you know, for me, it was always on the edge of, oh, no, nah, you're yeah. almost going to tip out. So, But does that make you – so with that, mm. you talked about gratitude earlier. Does that make you grateful in the moment though, like, this could be gone next year. Could be one more. Yeah. Was that a thing for you, Jess? Oh, hundred percent. For me, it was like, oh wow, cool. I, I get another contract. I don't have to go teaching. So you know, and then you know, it just it just seemed to go like that, eh? And um, you know, you're always just grateful for yeah. the opportunity and just um, yeah, and you want to give and you know respond to um, the different rewards that you get along the way, eh? Make all the tackles for everyone and. Oh, but there, there was one job I couldn't couldn't do any line breaks or anything. I had to do some work on the field. So you know that, that was the probably the bit for me personally. Anyway, yeah, yeah, was yeah. just um, having that that uh, gratitude and therefore operating mm-hmm. on that mindset that hey, it could be could be done at any time. So Jez, oh, oh, this is a question that we always kind of ask. Oh, I think me and um, Cliff kind of always talk about. But what do you what are your um, thoughts on where does high performance and well being kind of mm. Does it go hand in hand or or it doesn't? 100%. Like, um, I think about all the best coaches that we've had, they've um, they've understood you as a person or been been more uh, willing to offer you as the person. Um, and then you can get the best out of a player that way, eh, I reckon. Mm. Like, um, like, man, I think about my career and, like, the coaches that I responded to the most is the ones that I um, wanted to play for. You think, man, this guy understands me, or he's got my best uh, wishes, or you know, best intentions in his heart, and and so you know, those guys. Oh man, I want to, you know, just want to play yeah. for this dude and what he's about mm-hmm. and what he's trying to build here, and da da da, you know. And then the ones you didn't know was sort of like, oh, this guy doesn't <laughs> think I'm any good. I ask stuff, no, nah. you know. So there wasn't many of those coaches, but um, shall we name him? No. <laughs> uh, so you know, so, so you know, that sense where. If the coach has got you in terms of a person, you know, you're willing to go over and beyond mm. even the contract number, right? Eh? Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you pay beyond, um, you know, your responsibilities, I suppose. So for me, that's where it, it sort of uh, goes hand in hand is where um, – and I, I see it too, like the coaches that, that are invested in the person and want the best for the person um, and don't just see them as a number, um, you know, they tend to get a lot of traction with the, with mm. the individual player. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think um, it's a nice segue into – uh, when you talk about sort of what you're involved in now, but I mean, that's mm-hmm. not just recent. You've been doing this a while. And I think being able to pick up on some of that with you, so you, you talk about coming out and you taught for a little while, mm-hmm. but now we're, uh, you ended up back in, in footy. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about that, that Jez, about how you sort of ended up back with the Warriors? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what you're doing now because I think you've got some great insight into, we talk about this well being space like, mm-hmm what it was when they first brought a well-being manager in. Mm. Like, what is that to what it is a number of years later and what you're doing in present time? So, yeah, I mean, if we go back to sure. that, how did you come back into the Warriors fold um, and your different roles that changed? Yeah, no. Well, again, I um, uh, got a chance to work at the Auckland Rugby League post-footy, uh, just running the schools program there. Um and so it was funny too, like, you know, because I trained as a teacher, I thought I'd go for this football development role. And um, and I didn't get it, I think, at the Auckland Rugby League. Stuff you pack up. <laughs> no, just joking. <laughs> but then they, they rang up and said, no, I don't think you're good for that role, but how about you try this role? And it was a school development role. So thank you, Pat Cuffy. And so, um, so we ended up doing that for a little bit. So I was doing that for like two years. And then, um, then the Warriors, uh, an old contact that we had here, old team manager, Don Mann, uh, bless his heart. He see, he rings up and says, "Hey, um, we're looking for a team manager for our twenties program. Uh, why don't you come across and and do that?" And I'm thankful because he felt like I was up to it, but also it was a new role. So he was, um, yeah. The fact that he um, mm. part of it was I look back and you realize, hey, it's important to um, manage your um, uh, what is it reputation. Uh, relationships with people away eh? because mm-hmm. sometimes they bounce back and, and reward you. So mm-hmm. I'm always grateful that Don thought that I was a person that might be able to uh, fit that thing that they were looking to fill. And so that's how I ended up back at the Warriors. Uh, 2010 uh, was like November 2009. We started for that uh, next season. Um, yeah, Donnie Mann gave us a contract to be the uh, under-20s team manager and and what is it, well-being guy for the NRL team. 
Yeah. And it was funny because back then, 2010, right? Um, there was like three staff on at the at the um, at NRL. Uh, now there's like 303 staff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, back then it was very new. Uh, Nigel Vangana was heading up the program. Uh, the under twenties had just started in 2008, and they were just trying to uh, mold um, the uh, curriculum around uh, mm. how do we develop uh, NRL players from from that uh, under 17, 18 age. So. That's where it sort of started, um, and at the time, I remember I um, I even asked um, the club at the time. I said, "What does this role involve?" And they were like, "Yeah, so <laughs> we think it's a little bit of how about you just figure it out, and then you know we'll just write that in the job description." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, let's do that." So um, you know, that's just where it was it's back into. It, yeah. it was just like do your best and uh, make sure no one kills himself. And I said, "Oh, that's a big task. Um, um, I don't think I can achieve that." No. So you know, that's where yeah, it yeah. started back in two thousand ten. And so, obviously, well-being today, and we'll get to your current sort of role and team that you have, is very different, vastly different to what we knew at the time, mm. ne- over nearly 10 years ago now. Um, in what ways, so if you think back then, mm. what was well-being understood as? I mean, I know you just mentioned that they asked you to sort of build the plane while it's taken off. Yeah. Um, but how is well-being different now compared mm. to when you first started in the space yeah, it's massive. Um, for one, yeah, it's cool to see the NRL invest in the space uh, more and more uh, in terms of resource, and so that's cool. Um, and now there's a like a qualification, like certified level four that you can complete to mm. to be on stuff. So you know, then there's a lot of theory and stuff you sort of go through in terms of um, designing programs and running programs. So in terms of that part, it's developed a lot. But I, I think like the biggest difference was back in 2010. It was almost like. Um, uh, what is it? Can you take care of all the people that, um, you know, all the yuck stuff? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I think he's got a problem. Can you go and fix him and then bring him back? It was that kind of mentality. Yeah. Uh, whereas now we're more um, proactive in building good stuff so that uh, a player is more like a building protection around things that are going to happen, yep. like life and hurdles and challenges. So uh, there's been a shift that way in terms of the mindset around it. Um and plus, um, yeah, you're, you're um, asked for advice a lot these days and what have you, whereas back in the day it was, oh, yeah, we got these two problem um, guys. Can you just take them away somewhere and um, sort them out <laughs> sort and them then bring out, them yeah. back? So, you know, that whole shift in mindset I think is is cool uh, from the game and um, uh, across all 17 clubs. Yeah, yeah, because rugby league historically is known as a tough man's game, right? It's a tough, oh. tough game to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I had an experience where when I, you know I sort of first got involved around chaplaincy, and um, someone you know a tough man figure in the game said to me, "Like you, mate, you're a good guy, but I don't know about this tree hugging stuff, right?" And so that sort of perception that to care is, is that softness. Was <laughs> was <it? No. laughs> and he was said it was jizz, man. Oh. I'm just saying, but but that perception that in the game, you know, because we play a tough game, that. Oh. There's not a, a place for that, but so what would you say to that? Like, what is it to be courageous now to be tough? Is it not speaking about what's yeah. going on for you, or, or is it to keep it all bottled up? And you know, we talk now about having those uh, courageous conversations, and uh, it does take courage, eh, to share your the- feelings and uh, your thoughts. But uh, no, just some flashbacks, eh? One of Ali's coaches used to tell us, man, rugby league is the best place to die. That field out there, <laughs> man. Don't worry about anything else. And it was like, you know, it was the be all and end all was the the game and the two points, which in, in one respect is important when you're in it, in it to win it. But um, but you're right. And so, you know, in, in the past, it was seen as weak if you share or showed any kind of um, uh, vulnerability. Vulnerability. Um, but it's weird, eh? Because then guys went away and um, expressed it, I suppose, in a different way, eh? And then we're wondering, why is that guy drunk on the ground and crying? And you're like, oh, maybe because he's, you know, yeah, yeah, he yeah. hasn't been able to un- unload some stuff. So anyway, so you know, the game's sort of come a long way in that sense. Um, but I'd say even now, we still, you know, it takes a bit for guys to be vulnerable and have those discussions. But you know, I, I, I still, even in that sense, um, notice a shift. I think about even some of the Warriors players now; they actually use uh, professional mind coaches, mm. you know, which is to 
talk about mindset, mm -hmm. how do they deal with adversity and so on and so forth. And there's a couple of guys that actually spend their own money to do that. Yeah, eh? right. So it's even a space now that's welcomed by professional athletes and coaches see the need for it and the use for it. So in that sense, there has been a change and I think it continues and needs to continue to change. Uh, not just at the top level, but yeah. uh, all the way all down. The down. Oh, it's brought, back, brought some flashbacks. You know, I remember that day eh, when I was, I think it was a video, one of the boys went down and then the coach goes, is it broken? Is your leg broken? No, nah, he did. No, nah, get up. <laughs> <They're> like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, it has changed, eh? So yeah. bit of uh, PC now, so you can't really date. Well, well, we can't say that. Yeah, no I think to that point, eh, understanding what is resilience. Like resilience isn't when you're going through some sort of trauma that you sweep it under the carpet. But it's also finding that sweet spot of how do I keep going? Mm. Um, and that might be to the things you see, like talking to someone, um, sharing how you what's going on for you so that you can still continue to play the toughest physical sport in the world, right? Yeah. I get it. Now, some coaches say, no, this is a job, you know, da 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 But it's like what you said before, like if you invest in the player and spend the time to care for them, then the return is massive, eh? You know? mm. And so taking that time to um, – treat a player or be with them when they're going through the valley, you know, when they come out the other side, man, you know, it's I reckon the return yeah. is massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's cool. And so sort of bringing us to, to where you are now, mm -hmm. what you're doing here at the, the one NZ Warriors. Um, what's your current role, Jez? I mean, I know we've alluded to it a little bit, but to really specify for people um, what you do now and, and how was that space growing from when you first started? Yeah, no, hundred percent. So uh, the role at the moment is, uh, I think, the official title on the on the little business card is uh, well being manager uh, for the uh, Warriors. Um, so that involves like buying coffees and lunches. No, <laughs> it, it just um, yeah, no, it's just to help players on their journey. Uh, ultimately, we're just trying to help them recognize. Uh, where it is, who they are, and where is it they want to go in terms of them, the person, and then just trying to help them get there. Uh, yeah. Part of that is uh, the career planning. Like, you know, like we said, hey, mm. it's going to finish soon the journey. Mm. So, what are you going to do next? So, it's to help them uh, pivot to the next uh, position or the next opportunity. Uh, at the same time, it's just helping them navigate uh, the challenges in life that come up as they're a professional athlete. Mm. Yeah, it could be simple stuff as, you know, getting crook and having COVID or, you know, um, relationships, finances, you know, there's a bit of a spectrum there that we use. Yeah. And so it's just helping them with each of those different areas. We say the eight areas of well-being across the NRL, and that's just the model that we use. Mm. So you got a bit of a team doing that with you at the moment? Yeah. So we went from, um, so back in 2010, it was a half position, like you do half of this and then half of something else, to now there's um, basically, um, there's myself full-time, and then there's three part-time positions. So two and a half positions. Yeah, nice. Um, and then we got this uh, chaplain guy that comes in. He does all the work for free, so we love that guy. No. Um, so, you know, there's there's different helps there as well, uh, but that's essentially the role um, mm. to help players on their journey, be the best and present the best that they can um, so they can do their work on the field as if they're managing the rest of their life as well. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. And so we talk about Ali framed it up at the beginning, finding your front, mm. which is what this is all about. For you, thinking back on your – not just your career but your life – um, what are some things, Jez, if we can land that today, if we were to give away two or three things that you find for you that are helpful, that help you find your front, get momentum, keep going, mm. keep positive, keep grateful, what would those uh, couple of things be that you could give us as, yeah. as nuggets of gold to yeah. take away today? The one thing I'd say is um, just to know who you are. And, you know, it's a big piece, but essentially it's, um, you know, what are the values that you're going to live by? And then that speaks to the authentic you, eh? And then as long as you're always true to yourself in that sense, then, you know, you can't be uh, unhappy with things as they come along. Mm. Um, for example, for me, uh, faith's a big part of it. My identity is tied to uh, my faith as a Christian and and um, what I perceive God saying and says I should be doing. How do I honor him? And so in that sense, uh, I feed everything else through that prison, mate. Mm. And he says, you know, the greatest way to love me is to love others mm. uh, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So, I'm here to, to serve in that sense. And so I try and, you know, for me, that's who I am and I feed everything through that. Yeah, nice. uh, so if people, you know, actually it took me a while to figure that piece out, eh? Uh, even though I was a religious kid for a while, you know, I sort mm. of wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. And who am I really? Yeah. Mm. So, you know, as soon as, and as long as, and I see that with athletes too, where they're trying to figure out who they are and they <laughs> might go out on a weekend experiment there and there. So they're still trying to work out. Nah, yeah. yeah. So once they lock that in, I think, you know, they'll be a lot happier in life. Awesome, bro. So in terms of finding your front and also um, 
just uh, going out and having meals with Ali because he's very generous when he uh, <laughs> buys lunch, eh? That one time that he bought it. No, he... Uh, Relationships with people, I yeah. think, is the other big one. Eh? I was just going to uh, say that. Yeah, ask that. I mean, to, and maybe to land it here today, um, you know, those relationships. Getting to be around you guys quite a bit, I see the importance of, you know, a lot of – you hear all the stories and, you know, you can – those things sort of fade away a bit in terms of the fields and where it was, but what you see, the stories, the threads, the connection that binds them all together is, is the relationships. Mm. So with that being said – We've just seen go to air this match fit program that yourself and this great guy what, here. What you can't tell? <laughs> oh, um, it has, has been airing now for a couple of weeks. Um, what's the cope up behind that? Talk about relationships and the importance of it because you brought back all these legends to come together. And yeah, you know the promo talks about we're going to play this one last game, but was it about the one last game and? Or was it a bit more? Yeah, like for me, like when, when the invitation came, I was umming and ahhing, and part of me was like, oh, I don't want to do it. Uh, but then, you know, you think about the impact it could have on people's lives, and um, then you realise, oh, hey, you know, here's an opportunity to make a difference and do it by jumping in there and, and doing your best with it. And, um, and so for me, that was part of it. Um, like uh, I, you know, I got some family members going through some health challenges, eh, mm. related to uh, you know their physical health. So uh, for me, that was part of the journey of just going on and saying, "Hey, we can do this." Um, and so yeah, and then actually one of the first person I rang up was this guy. He said, "Hey, you gonna do it?" I don't want to do it by myself, eh. So um, and then when I realised who else was on the show, you realise, oh man, that'd be cool just to together yeah. go on the journey. And and sure enough, a lot of banter, a lot of mocking. Then is that mentally good for health? No. <laughs> but uh, no, it was good banter because, you know, our relationship. And then, um, yeah, it was a really good journey, actually. Mm. But, you, but you see how important, like, the camaraderie, um, you know, meant to some of the boys, you know, how we come together. And yeah, some of the boys, like, really kind of was, um, you know, was wanting this for ages. So, mm. you, know, um, well, you know, it was good to see them um, kind of come out of their shells again and um, pretty much be happy, I guess. Um, but just that connectability, yeah, it was mm. it was awesome for the boys and probably playing. Probably for me, I was I was trying to reach out to the people that was on the couch and still kind of you know um, thinking about doing it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was the lukewarm guy, but you know I kind of got through it. Thank thank you, Lord. So yeah, no, nah, awesome, bro. So look, uh, geez, we really grateful for your time, man. I think all the the pearls of wisdom that you've given us just in this conversation have been mm. really really helpful. And I, I hope and I know and I trust that for those that listen, watch, sort of pick any of this stuff up that, you know, one, we get to see what you're up to now, but also more importantly to see the impacts of what you're doing mm -hmm. and how looking after yourself and having, I think more important, that's the theme of probably this this episode is connection, relationship, have someone to talk to and be vulnerable enough to do it, you know, courageous enough to do it. So, yeah, man, we, we appreciate you and your time. Any final words from... Too great. Hey man, I just want to say, man, shout out to the New Zealand Rugby League. You guys are doing great work. The podcast even next level, man. Your comms team, mate, they're sensational. Yes, amazing. So anyway, uh, next level. Good luck um, too. And um, yeah, now keep up the good work. And um, Ali, you still owe me a feed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, Jez was the biggest loser. Also, oh, you call me a loser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, looking good, mate. Looking good. But no, well, I was going to say on that, we used to say to Jez, see you later, but now we say see it lighter. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, put that on a t-shirt. We'll finish on that. Find your front. Find your front. Find your front. <laughs>